Hello, hello everyone. We are from Logitronics, and this is our first session on webinar series of FPGA. And we are going to have multiple sessions in this second series of webinar. We already have organized our first series of webinar, that is webinar series on FPGA first in 2019, just one year back. And this session is mainly targeted for machine learning acceleration. So we'll have insightful uh, session on Xilinx Pytis AI and the MPSOC FPGA. For introducing myself, I'm Krishna Gairi from Logitronics. I'm your host for today, today's session. So I have Abhidan Zhang Thapa. So he will be the presenter of the session. And you already know about the overall contents of this session. So we will have detailing about Vitis AI and different components and features of Vitis AI. So how we can design custom platform, custom board into the FPGA development flow. So uh, I would like to hand over this session to Abhidan Zhang Thapa. So he will start from the uh, presentation. So Abhidan, you can start on. Thank you, Krishna. Hello, everyone. I'm Avdan Thapa. I'm from Logitronics, and today I'm going to present on uh, machine learning with Xilinx Vitis AI and MP SOC FPG. So the table of content for today's discussions are shown here. First, we'll uh, go into the introduction to the Vitis AI. Then we have what is inside the DNN DK and Vitis AI. After that, we'll discuss about the flow detailing with the Vitis AI and how we can create a custom platform for boards such as Auto96 and Petalinux build to boot a embedded system where we can implement our Vitis AI models. Then we'll look into a high-level overview of AI optimizer, a pruning tool from Xilinx, and also some other methods regarding the pruning and how we can optimize and prune the model using a custom uh, neural network models which we have also included in our white paper WPL053 and then we'll see how to migrate ACE-based design uh, for ACE devices into cloud-based cars and FPGA and finally we will see the YOLO v3 flow in Vitus AI. Okay meantime I would like to add one more thing so uh, everyone so you are also getting like questions and chat window on your right hand side so you can also arise your questions to us, so we will be uh, addressing your questions at the end of this uh, presentation session. So we are uh, so done. You can just continue. Thank you, Krishna. So Vitis AI is the latest tool framework to implement the neural network in the uh, FPGS using deep learning processing unit, which makes uh, the implementation of any deep neural network models very easy. Vitis AI supports both is and cloud-based solutions using CAFE and TensorFlow frameworks. Both of these frameworks are mainstream and are highly used in the research and uh, uh, deployment environments. Uh, Vitis AI also provides a comprehensive set of pre-optimized models that are ready to be deployed on Xilinx FPGA. We can also use these models as a reference to create our custom models. Vitis AI also includes I-level C++ and Python API for maximum portability from edge to cloud-based devices. On the right, you can see the diagram of the top to bottom level hierarchy of the Vitis AI library. So let's talk about DNN DK. If you have already heard of a DNN DK, it's an older tool for deep neural network implementation on FPGA by Xilinx. It was mainly targeted for uh, ace based devices for Zinc 7000 and Zinc MPSOC families. It did not support the uh, cloud devices like LVU. It contained a uh, decent quantizer, DNNCC compiler, but it lacked the pruning methods like uh, AI optimizer, which is currently present in Vitis AI and is highly efficient. The older DNN DK version DPU only supported up to the three cores which limited the performance in uh, some high performance video application cases and 
uh, where real-time performance were required in some complex high-level models. It also provided the AI SDK library containing high-level APIs, but were limited to few classification and detection networks. Now, they have released a few months ago Vitis AI, which is the latest and greatest tool. It contains AI optimizer, AI quantizer, AI compiler, AI profiler, and AI library. And we'll go into the details for each of these components of the Vitis AI. So another thing that is presented with the Vitis AI is the AI model zoo. It's a collection of already pre-trained models in CAFE and TensorFlow framework for different applications like classification, detection, segmentation, and post estimation. Some of the classification networks like uh, VZZ, ResNet, Inception, and uh, for detection, uh, FSD, YOLO V2, V3. Also some segmentation networks like FPN, DeepLab, and Isonet. All these models are available in the uh, link shown here, which can be directly downloaded and uh, deployed on the uh, FPGS uh, using the YDCI. So what is present in the AI models? So this is the uh, files or folder structure for the TensorFlow framework models. They provide a test code which contains the code to demo and evaluate the uh, performance of the models that are available in the AI model zoo. They provide us with the quantized model and a deployed version model. So deployed model is already compiled and that can be directly integrated into the Vitis AI library. They also provide a frozen floating point model that we can input to the uh, uh, Vitis quantizer. They also provide the uh, CAFE trained models. So this is the folder structure for the uh, CAFE framework. Uh, they provide us the test and also the train code way, which we can use to train, retrain that model in our custom data set. They also uh, give the folder where we can keep our training data set. And they provide us the floating point models and quantized model. And floating point model contains also test and train and validation products text. This can be used to run evaluation with Python test course or can be used for training and testing using the CAFE framework. Next, we have the Vitis AI workflow. So how we start in the Vitis AI uh, to deploy our model? First, as in any case, we train our models for our specific applications, either in CAFE framework or in TensorFlow framework. After training in those frameworks, we receive a floating point model. This floating point model contains words and activation values in a 32-bit floating point. So the DPU only supports 8-bit network models. That is why we need to quantize the 32-bit floating point models into an 8-bit integer. And this is uh, done by the AI quantizer in the step quantize and calibrate. So the AI quantizer uh, can both quantize and calibrate the model. After quantizing, we test the model's performance. And if the accuracy is good, uh, we convert it directly into the uh, intermediate representation uh, denoted by IR or if the accuracy is not satisfactory, then we can fine tune the model again using the AI quantizer by feeding uh, the model with a training data set and fine tuning until we get the satisfactory result. After getting the satisfactory results, we convert it to intermediate representation and pass it to the AI compiler. So AI compiler compiles the uh, intermediate representation of the model into uh, the required instruction set and data flow uh, for the DPU. And then we deploy the model. Before we deploying the model, we need to also make sure of the pre-processing and post-processing portion. But all of this is made easy by the Vitis AI library that also comes with Vitis AI. So the Vitis AI quantizer, let's look uh, deeply into this portion. So Vitis AI quantizer is a uh, uniform symmetric quantizer. That means it converts 32-bit words and activation uh, values into 8-bit uh, words and activations for both of them. 
it contains uh, uh, for quantizing the parameter and activation it also calibrates and fine tunes the model so there are two versions of ai quantizer one is for cpu and another is for gpu but gpu version is 10 times more faster than the cpu version here you can also see some of the detection networks after it has been quantized and the precision difference if we look into the SSD BGG network for uh, trained on VOC dataset, the initial floating point model has 76.47% MEP. But after quantizing, it has been reduced to 76.27%. So by decreasing a 32 bit model into an 8 bit model, we only lost 0.2% of the precision, which is not uh, will not impact the accuracy uh, by a large margin. Similarly, uh, SSD mobile net and YOLO B3 also have a very low uh, MAP difference after being quantized. After the quantization process has been completed, we move on to the YTS AI compiler. So to first call the YTS AI quantizer, you use these codes. So YQ TensorFlow calls the AI quantizer for TensorFlow framework. Then we input the command quantize. So this command, all these process are in command line uh, interface. It does not uh, contain a GUI interface. So YQ TensorFlow command requires a uh, frozen uh, floating point model and a calibration uh, data set and also the output directory to save the quantized model. We input the input nodes and output nodes of the model along with the input shapes. Here it has been mentioned 224, 224 by 3. And finally, the calibration iteration. Uh, the value for the calibration iteration depends on the number of images that has been used uh, to calibrate your data. So if you have a large number of uh, images, then you need to increase the calibration iteration. On the bottom, you can see the uh, output of this uh, quantization command. Here we have quantized the ResNet uh, 50 classification network and the model outputs a deploy frozen uh, model. Then we move on to the YTC ad compiler. After the model has been quantized to a 8 bit integer, we need to convert it into the instruction set that the DPU understands. So YTC ad compiler contains a parser, optimizer, and core generator to convert uh, the model into DPU instruction set that the GPU understands. Uh, so different optimizations are performed in uh, this process, like layer fusion, decomposition, instruction scheduling, on-chip memory uses. Compilation is also hardware dependent. So during, uh, when we run the AI compiler, we need to mention the target board like GC104, GC102, or Ultra 96 that we are using to target. And finally, after compilation, the compiler outputs a executable L file that can be integrated with a VITC AI library or advanced uh, DPU API programming to deploy the model. To compile uh, the model, we use YC TensorFlow command, uh, which we call the VITC AI compiler. It requires a quantized model uh, the information about the target architecture board and the output directory where the model will be saved after being compiled and the net name. Uh, so the net name is the uh, name of our model after it has been compiled and other optional options like uh, save kernel and there we also have modes for uh, normal or debug models. So GPU that we are focusing here is for the ASK cases. And GPU version 2 is specifically targeted for the MPSOC devices. Here you can see the uh, architecture of uh, GPU version uh, 2. It contains uh, several processing engines uh, interconnected with a global memory pool where the instructions are passed through instruction phase unit and high performance scheduler will uh, manage the uh, data flow of the instruction sets. So GPU version 2 features uh, supported hard Hardware architectures like uh, Zing 7000 from uh, Z7020 to Z7100 and MP SOCs from uh, JU2 to JU1100. So it supports ReLU6 Relu and Leaky ReLU activation functions, and the GPU is highly customizable. Uh, 
It can be customized the RAM uses for high performance and low resource utilization both. It also can be customized the number of cores utilizing some VRAM or URAM for higher or lower DPU uses. It also has a channel augmentation feature to improve the performance. So what channel augmentation does it? We can augment or increase the number of uh, channels so that uh, multiple steps will be processed uh, parallelly when the deep neural network is being executed. So before we implement the Whitish AI model, we need a platform. Here we can see a uh, block design for a custom platform that we have targeted for Ultra 96 board. It contains MPSOC processing unit and uh, deep processing unit, deep neural network processing unit connected to the clocks and in interrupts. There are two methods uh, to create the platform. We can go th to the Vice platform route or Vivado block design route. Here we have uh, shown the Vivado block design route. After the block design is created, we export uh, the hardware uh, description file, uh, which is in a .xsa format, and we move on to the creation of Petalinux build. In Petalinux build, first we need to create a project using a template for the Zinc MPSOC. Since we are targeting the Ultra 96, then we change the directory to the Petalinux project. Then we import the hardware description file, that is .xsf file format by using git hardware description command. After this, we need to add a few packages which are required to support our BPU and Vitis AI library. Uh, this can be added inside the project spec folder inside meta user, inside conf, where you can see user root fs config file. You open that file and append the packages that are shown in this slide. These packages are which is required to run the Vitis AI smoothly. Then we run the Petalinux config minus C rootfs command, which will open the configuration uh, interface for the uh, packages. We select the user packages and we enable all the packages that we uh, appended in the user rootfs config file. After that, we save and exit. Then now we need to update our uh, device tree file. The device tree file is inside the meta user recipes BSP device tree file folder, where you can see system user.ddsf file. Here we need to append the device tree information for our GeoCL uh, driver. GeoCL is the uh, Jinx uh, runtime. Uh, that supports the DPU for MPSOC devices. Here we have added the driver information with compatible uh, Xilinx GeoCL and interrupt, interrupt information. Here we have used around 32 in interrupt. Then finally, we save and exit and we execute the pedalance build command. The pedalance build with command will uh, give the required boot images to run the DPU on the targeted board. Now let's talk about the Vitis AI Optimizer. Vitis AI Optimizer is a pruning tool from Xilinx. It prunes the redundant connection in a neural network and reduces the number of operations required so we can get uh, uh, more performance from even a complex model. Uh, it can do both fine-grained pruning and coarse-grained pruning. Fine-grained pruning uh, reduces the number of uh, neuron connections to each other and gives a sparse weights matrix. Coarse grain pruning, also known as channel pruning, it removes the uh, number of neurons that do not affect the output of the model by a large significant margin altogether. The Vitis AI optimizer prunes iteratively. After pruning, uh, we check the accuracy of the model and if it is not satisfactory, we again fine tune and keep pruning until we get uh, the results that we want. So why this AI optimizer is not the only method uh, to prune the model. Basically pruning method can be used on different frameworks. And we have also optimized the model uh, by implementing a channel pruning for object detection network called YOLO V3. This model has 
being passed through the code that channel prunes the network model. After the YOLO V3 has been pruned, the prune model will then be fine tuned. After fine tuning, we'll check if we get the satisfactory MEP. And if the resultant MEP is near the original MEP, we can again prune the model using channel pruning method and keep doing it until the uh, performance and uh, precision ratio is satisfactory to our use case. Finally, that prune model is deployed. So here you can see the results that we got from channel pruning the YOLO V3 model. Uh, our white paper WPL053 also shows these results. You can see the license plate model. We have iterated two times. We have also uh, targeted a Berkeley drive data set for autonomous or ADAC purposes. Here we have only done one iteration. The uh, global thresholding or pruning ratio, that the ratio by which we got the number of neuron connection is uh, 50%. We also have pruned a phase plus person detection model. We have also ran uh, this by two, two iterations. As you can see from the results, for phase plus person model, we have reduced the uh, requirement of uh, 77 G flops down to a, a 98 G flops, sorry. So the 98 G flops requirement is been decreased down to 18 G flops without impacting the precision by a lot. We can see the 77% uh, MEP in the original model has been only been decreased to 76.25. So there's only decrease of around 1%. You can check the uh, white paper uh, in the link zone. YDCA also provides the uh, DPU version one for the cloud-based devices. Uh, previously, it was called as uh, XDNN and it was separate from the DNN DK package. Now, in YTC AI, they have unified both the uh, DP version 1 and DP version 2 in a same runtime so that a single model can be used on both use cases. So let's go into the uh, DP version 1 features. It contains a 96 by 16 uh, uh, systolic uh, size array of DSPs and a 9 MB of on-chip tensor memory that is created by using the available URL. It has a distributed filter cache. It uses utilizes DDR memory for storing the filters and tensor data that it weights. It also has a pipeline uh, scale, ReLU, and pooling blocks along with a separate standalone pooling and L-wise engine uh, so that the process can be parallelized. The hardware assisted tiling engine to subdivide the tensors to fit in on chip tensor memory and pipeline scheduling. All this makes the uh, DP version one even more efficient and faster in the uh, cloud based devices like Alview. So, for interface, it has the standard uh, AXI memory mapped and AXI4 light top level interfaces for simplified system level integration in our. Uh, divider block design flow, and also it can be integrated with already available other IPs from the giants. So let's talk about how the model that has been deployed in the ACE can be migrated to the cloud. So this has been made easy uh, by introducing a Vitis runtime. So this Vitis runtime uh, has a unified APIs and unified implementation of network models. It can do efficient task scheduling multi-threading and memory management. Due to this, the model that we target for the is can be implemented in the cloud without having to change the uh, deployment code because the YDS AI runtime provides the unified APIs both in a high level C++ and Python languages. These unified APIs are common for both uh, ACE GPU and cloud GPU. And using this, we can deploy a model written for one into the another with, without any drastic changes. So these are the unified APIs uh, that are provided. For C++ APIs, you can see there are seven APIs like create GPU runner, 
that creates the tasks to run on the GPU, execute async, uh, which runs uh, asynchronous tasks on the GPU, uh, GPU runner wait, which uh, waits for the previous task to complete, get tensor format, uh, which uh, retrieves the format of the tensor in the neural network model, get input tensors, and get output tensors. Similarly, same APIs are also uh, for the Python, which can be used if we are implementing the uh, net neural network model or deploying them in a Python language. So, why this AI library also has different already pre-optimized codes for different uh, networks. Here we can see the uh, YOLO v3 uh, code. This YOLO v3 code can just be inter uh, merged with the uh, compiled neural network model that we get output from the uh, AI compiler. Here we can see the Vitis AI library code for pre-processing portion. So this, what does this code do is first input takes the image and manipulates the image like resizing, scaling, and converting the channels uh, that are suitable for the uh, GPU input. After the pre-processing is done, the Vitis AI library code uh, calls the GPU task. So the GPU task is run. So this portion, upper portion of the code calls the YOLO v3 GPU and uh, passes the pre-processed input to the GPU. After the GPU runs, it outputs the results or uh, tensors. After that, we have post-processing portion of the code. So the post-processing portion of the code includes uh, either preparing the output results, creating the bounding box, and also showing the results in the manner uh, that can be understood by the uh, viewers. Here we can see some of the results of YOLO v3 that we have done in our license plate detection model and also person detections. So these are some of the results. Also, we will have the live demo of YOLO v3 with custom Vitis platform on our Vitis AI session 2, where we'll show the live demo and end-to-end -to, -end to flow of our implementation. So these were the high-level overview of the Vitis AI and some of the pruning and how we can use the Vitis AI on both is and cloud devices. So what's next? Till now, we just looked into a high-level overview of uh, what is Vitis AI, how it is used in both is and cloud cases. In our next session, we're going to look more deeply into the advanced Vitis API programming, which can be used to create for our own custom models, apart from the models that are available in the uh, Xilinx AI model zoo. We look into the end-to-end -end flow of implementation. We start uh, from a trained model and we quantize, compile, and deploy the model and we'll check a live demo on uh, ADAS uh, using Yolo v3. We'll also look into a Vitis AI model deploy uh, demo on the cloud devices. So those who have already registered for this webinar will get the link to them soon. And those who have not registered yet can go to the link given on this presentation. So these are some of the references uh, that we use to uh, create this session. So this was all for today. Thank you. So thank you. Thank you, Abhidhan. So thank you for the insightful session. So I hope the BIDCI flow is uh, quite more uh, interesting and our participants also get an overview of this uh, flow, uh, by design flow, and uh, they also get uh, some idea about uh, what is the features on by DCI in talking about uh, while we are, uh, they are using DNDK previously.
So what are the new things come up with by DCI and how we can uh, target the AS-based devices or NPSOC and cloud-based devices like LBOs for uh, development with PyTCI. So PyTCI can be utilized for targeting edge-based devices and cloud-based devices. So these all are the uh, features including PyTCI and uh, yeah, Abhidhan also focus on the pruning. So we also have WPL053 that is white paper. So uh, you everyone guys, uh, you can also check our website Logitronics and we'll also send you the uh, PDF version of this presentation, along with a recorded session, recorded this uh, webinar session. So you will also get the recorded version of this webinar in the email. So we'll uh, send you in the email. So let's go to the uh, Q&A session. So we have uh, questions from our participants. So I would like to start on the Q&A. And I'm talking about Q&A. Uh, so one question is on ITCI is software or hardware. So uh, Abhidhan, can you just add few more, few things on it? So ITC AI is a collection of both uh, software library and hardware processing unit. In the hardware processing portion, it contains a deep processing unit, uh, which is implemented on the FPGA. On the software portion, it contains the ITC AI library. Uh, which has the high level uh, APIs that can be used uh, to deploy our model on the hardware DPU. Okay, so I hope the questions has been addressed on. So is, is, uh, as we talk on this presentation in this webinar, so BITCI have uh, different uh, models which are uh, already available and for targeting the custom boards or the Xilinx board, there are also uh, some references. And for Xilinx board, there is a GPU TRD targeted with Bytis AI. And you can just check on Bytis GPU TRD on GitHub. So you will get the uh, TRD for JCU 102, 104, and 106 is also, I think, uh, going to release very soon. And so the Xilinx boards already have the BITIS AI GPU flow and for the custom boards we also have so a few uh, uh, steps targeting the older 96 from AMNET and we can also target the custom boards for that we have to have uh, follow to follow the Vivaro and pedal next flow so we can build the custom platform so uh, we have a few more questions and uh, one more question is uh, uh, cost of the tool. So uh, one question is on cost of the tool. So basically, by TCI uh, is uh, not required. Uh, it doesn't require to have the license. So Xilinx provided by TCI free of cost. So you don't need to have any further cost on it. And for the AI optimizer, so they have uh, different uh, model licensing model for AI optimizer. However. For YTCI, there is no uh, cost model. And one more question we also have, uh, cost of the processing unit. So I think the questions uh, must be uh, targeted for uh, processing unit means the DPU. So uh, if the question is targeted for a DPU, then uh, actually there are, uh, in, in the DN and DK flow, there was the uh, timeout version of DPU IP release on public website. However, on the uh, FAA request, uh, the field application engineers request, while you request to FAE, then they can just uh, coordinate to provide you the non time limit or say full DPU IP. I'm talking about the DN and DK. So, then can you just add on how it works on BITIS? So, the DPU licensing or uh, uh, processing unit cost uh, comes uh, with the Vivado license. Mm -hmm. uh, currently, it is uh, free of cost. You can uh, download uh, from their GitHub link and add the repo in the Vivado and you can use it free of cost. Yes, the GPU comes with the Vitis AI. So, so I would like to just uh, enlighten that uh, Vitis AI uh, does not need extra license and GPU is also comes up with Vitis AI. So you don't need license for Vitis AI and GPU. So, uh, uh, do bytes come with a DPU? We have one more question. Do bytes come with DPU? So, 
GPU is actually the IP. So like say module from Xilinx. So they also have uh, like uh, two version of GPU as we discussed. One is for ASBS uh, implementation, MP SOC, which is a uh, GPU uh, version. And another is also another version is also there that is for cloud based. So we then can just highlight on it again. So for the cloud based, there is a separate version of uh, GPU version one. And for uh, ASBS devices, the GPU is version two. So uh, both of uh, this week comes with the YTCI. We do not need separate license for any one of them. Okay. So uh, we also have one more question. Uh, that is, is it purely Python code? So how can we answer this question? So the backend, the backend of YTCI is written in the C++. Uh, it also has a Python wrapper. Uh, so we, uh, you can also deploy your model in pure Python code. Or you can also deploy your model using C++ uh, APIs. So they are both uh, C++ and Python code are supported. Okay, that's nice. So that's nice. So there are many implementations, or there are many uh, uh, engineers working with Python-based uh, frameworks. So they can also target the Python. And I think uh, the TensorFlow is also there, so uh, we can utilize the TensorFlow-based uh, frameworks. And Python is supported previously in DN and DK. Uh, Large electronics team actually developed our solutions based on C or C++, the C++. And with YDCI, it is also, uh, YDCI also allow us to develop our solutions on Python. So this is the quite uh, interesting questions. And I think uh, these are the main questions, major questions and uh, we'd like to conclude uh, the session and let's check one more question so there is one more question about the difference between bytes and sdk so Abhidan, can you just highlight on it difference between bytes and sdk bytes is the newer tool that uh, uh supersedes the previous sdk so in previous sdk it was only to create the applications uh, to implement in the embedded environment or Xilinx FPG. So the current whitish tool that Xilinx has released is a combination of the previous HDXL, HDSOC and HDK. So using whitish, if we create a Blaze platform, we can create different applications in both C++ OpenCL. Previously that was possible in HDXL and HDSOC, but now they have merged all these three SDK, SDXL, and SDFC tools into a single tool called Bytes to make the workflow even more easier. Okay, that is also an interesting point. So Bytes I have uh, lots of things. So it just uh, is the super set of other Xilinx tools uh, like uh, Vivado. It, it covers up Vivado and it also have more the SDK and uh, if, if you just check on the latest Vivado versions, uh, uh, it just comes up with Vivado only. So there, there is no SDK. Uh, as I know, Abhidhan will add on it. So in the latest 2019.2 uh, version, there is no SDK. The portions that we used to do in uh, SDK are uh, now required to be done using the Whitish tool. Okay. Uh, that's nice. Uh, that's nice. And as we mentioned, we are also going to we are also going to send you a recorded webinar uh, link on the email. So uh, we'll uh, send you the link, uh, webinar recorded uh, link, and we'll also send you the PDF version of our presentations. And I think uh, uh, this is all the questions which we have uh, get on today's session. And as we mentioned, we are going to have a second session on Bytes AI. Actually, uh, we did not have a cover of the uh, demo, live demo sessions in this session, because uh, the demo will take a little time, or it, it, it standly uh, uh, check the time. So we want to just uh, focus on demo on next session. So we will uh, have a quite interesting demo with the next session. So thank you, everyone. Thank you, guys. Uh, for this session, for your questions, and if you have any questions, we are always uh, uh, responding you you guys on the email. So you can also connect us at email info at logictronics.com, or we are also actively uh, 
uh, uh, answering and actively addressing uh, queries uh, over uh, uh, our LinkedIn pages and other social media networks. So thank you everyone uh, for your questions and uh, for your participation. Uh, Logitronics would like to uh, thank you uh, for your time and for attending this session. So thank you. Thank you everyone. Thank you. Have a good day.